Channel One. My name is Milina, and I'm super excited to announce what we are going to watch in this hour. It's all about a celebration of having fun and a great experience together. And with that, I mean Oktoberfest. Um, no, I mean Deftoberfest. Oktoberfest? Was that my mistake? I thought we were celebrating Oktoberfest, Max, right? you're here. <laughs> I think you, it's you. You're the reason why um, it's confusing for me <laughs> <laughs> that I mix up these words because for some reason it is a little bit similar. Right. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, well, we're talking about Devtoberfest, and it's a celebration from developers for developers, so to Correct. say. Um, Devtoberfest was, or do you want to say what no, Devtoberfest no. is all about? No, I think, I think <laughs> now that we are sure that we're not talking about Oktoberfest, but Devtoberfest, I'm pretty sure that we can now <laughs> okay. go in more detail of what Devtoberfest is. So for developers, yes. so made by developers. Uh, so Devtoberfest was a nine-week celebration, so to say. Um, consisted of several enablement weeks uh, for the relevant uh, technologies SAP has, from CAP to RAP, Kima, Workflow, building extensions for Visual Studio Code, for uh, Google Chrome, whatever it is. And the main purpose was to simplify other developers' life. And the most important thing here is... It's not the beer. Not the beer? Okay. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, to build that in an open source approach. So um, others can have a look at the code, um, and that's a good point. Um, contribution can have many facets in that case. So it's, it could be a tool, a library, a CLI, a sample, um, or even documentation to another project or to an existing uh, project already. Um, we had many that were participating. In... Absolutely, absolutely. Um, we had around 800 registrations or something like that. Wow. And um, well, the main purpose of this enablement weeks were to seed ideas. And at the end of these nine weeks, or end of October, um, we had a judging week. So, Correct. oh, not yeah. a judging week, before we had the actual build week. So we enabled the forks and seed, uh, seeded ideas, and um, then the forks were uh, tasked, tasked, so to say, or um, invited to build something. Which and, then, and then your team was quite, quite serious about it, right? Absolutely, because we had to judge the ideas or projects which had been submitted to GitHub. And we had several submissions, and it's not been that easy for us to judge who is going to be in the file. So um, we wanted to make it as easy as possible for the community to uh, vote on uh, who's going to be uh, the winner. And before our community was asked to vote, we had to come up with five finalists. Um, and with that, you were you were having that serious uh, judging process, right? Of of uh, even creating a webinar on uh, what the process is like, on having a conversation about the finalists, about all contestants, and, and also um, to provide feedback. There's also a YouTube, uh, YouTube video on that. Absolutely. Correct? So a Devtoberfest judging on YouTube. <laughs> and you'll find definitely what we were thinking about uh, the submissions and why we have chosen those five finalists. Yeah. And not to forget, <laughs> we celebrated all of that with a beer at the end. You did? Most importantly, definitely. <laughs> and uh, the... No, <laughs> the latte. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't talk, I'm gonna talk about traditional dances here. That's not the right okay. time. <laughs> well, with that, we're super excited to um, watch the finalist presentation of the five contestants that made it to the end at Devtoberfest. Enjoy watching. Hello, I'm Gregor Wolf and I'm an independent SAP solution architect and I'm joined together with Mike. Yeah, so hi, I'm Mike. Um, I'm a sub cloud consultant and software architect for a small but awesome company right in the middle of Germany called P36. And we're also joined by the famous Volker. That's me. Uh, I'm a development architect at JNS Soft, a specialized SAP consultancy from Heidelberg. And today we are presenting you CDS PG and CDS DBM. Even though there were separate entries into the Diftoberfest, they're so closely related that it only makes sense to show them together so you get the full scope. 
and what they actually do. CDSPG and CDSDBM bring Postgres support for the cloud application programming model, our beloved CUP in short. And yeah, why did we start that? I already tried around uh, last year with it, but with CUP release four, SAP has now an official database API where we could hook in. And Sebastian von Sickle showed us the way how to create the Postgres adapter. And as SAP Cloud Platform offer now also a hyperscaler solutions for uh, Postgres SQL. So that's really now a good opportunity to create also the casual apps uh, on Cloud Platform. And yeah, uh, what's about CDS DBM? What does it solve, uh, Mike? Okay, so basically with CDSPG to have the translation from, from the cloud application programming model to Postgres and CDS DBM is basically used to deploy those tables and views and the whole data model to the database itself. So it's based basically the deployment unit. And it's uh, extracted in an extra NPM module because it may be uh, used with other databases in the future. Cool. And um, how production ready are we with uh, two projects? So yeah, first of all, I want to say a big thank you to the community, to especially to David Suder, who contributed a lot, um, and uh, those guys and uh, brought us really forward. And I think right now we are, yeah, I would call it kind of production ready. Uh, because we have basic support for the CRUD. So you can uh, read, create, update, and delete stuff through the service layer in the database and from the database. So this is pretty important and it's working. We also have our data support for stuff like filtering, selects, uh, expands, etc. I mentioned this, we ha have also deployment through the CDS DBM, which is Delta, which is capable of doing Delta deployments. So we don't erase the database on every deployment, but you just identify that data between the model and the database itself and can deploy this part. And since yesterday, actually, thanks again, David, uh, we have schema support, which is a solid foundation to add stuff like um, multi-tenancy, uh, which is sadly not yet available, but, but is a really complex feature uh, as is draft mode and as are the analytical calculations. And those stuff is not yet baked in, but we're on it. But I would say that, um, yeah, with this basic feature set available, uh, it's a, basically it's ready to be tried out. So just go ahead and use it. Yeah. And to actually show this to you, I'm just going to do a really quick demo showing you how things look and how things work. So what we do have is we have a basic uh, application running locally, which is uh, the beer shop created by Gregor. And it's basically exposing a entity called Brewery. And here you can see those breweries, which are already available in, in the Postgres database. And uh, I want to just do two things. First thing is I want to create a new one. So I created a HTTP client uh, test script. And if I just hit the send request button, you will actually see that it's a, the service has been called and the entity has been created. So when I refresh this, you should see that the sub ticket brewery is already available. So you see that we support the basic CRUD, CRUD stuff. And uh, one other thing I want to do is when we look at the schema itself, uh, I just want to add uh, another uh, property to the brewery. So maybe we are also interested in where those breweries are. So I'm just going to add the location, uh, maybe the string. Uh, the save button and um, I now I want to deploy this to, to my local database. So I just need to stop the server right now uh, since sadly we currently do not have auto reload or a hot reload, but we may introduce this in the future as well. So I just type in npx cds dvm deploy. And what this does, it basically starts to analyzing the delta between the current uh, CDS model and the database. Uh, this takes just a couple of seconds and then it's going to deploy things to the database. And if I now restart the server um, and we refresh the service, you should actually see that the location property is now available in the breweries. Uh, it's not yet filled because we don't have any data, but it's there. Okay, so that's it for the quick demo. And yeah, I hand over back to you, Craig. Thank you. And I will continue then with uh, my demo because I want to show you where does it run. Um, uh, when you look at the beer shop uh, demos that we've just seen, that is also a GitHub repo. 
and it gives you instructions how to run it on, for example, the Kima environment, which is available on SAP Cloud Platform, even trial. And then I tried it with sub Cloud Platform, of course, with service brokers, with a user provided service, and we are still working on the hyperscaler support. There is, as we use Liquid Base for uh, this Delta deployment, there are a little bit challenges, but uh, let's switch over to my screen now and have a look on the demo case with Kima. Yeah, let us show you the beer shop running on Kima. So I'm here on the Kima console, and in the Kima console, we see two pods running, and that is actually uh, the beer shop front end and the Postgres database. And when I go to the API rules, I can open my URL, which brings me directly to the beer shop you just seen with Mike. And I will show you the Fiori UI you can put on top of that. So let's have a look into the beers that are available there. And when we run it, you see, yeah, it works. But what I want, also want to show you, it works even with filtering. So we can go for the beer with this IBU and let's show the details. Yeah, so that's beer shop running on Kima. So now that you've seen uh, what CDS PG looks like, including a an UI and uh, what CDS DBM can do in terms of Delta deployment, now it's time to look at you and see what you can do, meaning contributing to the development of CDS PG. We have a document contributing um, in Markdown online in the repository and the to-do list. Both are linked in the presentation here. And um, our main intent when we set up the project was to get the whole environment setup process out of the way for you. So actually developing features takes less of an effort because you already have everything in place. Um, for that, we have a Docker setup with PostgreSQL and Adminer, as uh, you've already seen here, but also available locally. So if you look at the uh, command that's uh, posted on the slide here, and if you issue this command, then in the background, the whole Docker stack will boot up and you have the database, including Adminer, available locally in order to test out whatever features you have. So Adminer looks like this and you can log in with your default credentials, Postgres, Postgres. And then you see the beer shop here. Um, so that's in place. The second command that we have for setting up the environment is how to use a comparison service for developing features. So we bolted in a basic version of the beer shop for the test scope as well. And this is available locally um, under the standard URL 4004 on localhost. So whatever feature you're developing, you can actually compare with the implementation on SQLite. So for example, the data set here. Now, the third feature that enables you to get going quickly here is that we use Jest as the test runner and Jest has a watch mode. So once you shoot that one off, it's gonna run whatever tests you're currently developing and it watches for changes in the background. So once I actually make changes on a test, because currently it's going red in quotes, so it's not working yet. And if I save this, just runs the test again in the background and I can, say that I can see the result immediately. So meaning you have a very quick turnaround cycle in developing your features and the infrastructure is out of the way because we, we prepared it for you. So there's nothing that keeps you from actually contributing quickly. Having said that, both Gregor and Mike and also me, we have one wish left at the end of this little intro to CDS PG and CDS DBM for you. And um, I'm going to say it first and the other two are simply going to restate it. I think we want to make CAP or we want to see CAP being open source. Why? Yeah. Because it will make it even more easy for us to bolt in stuff additionally. It will enable SAP to contribute or to benefit from contributions from the community to get the whole CAP project forward. With that wish, I'll hand it over to Gregor. Yeah, and I can also ch only chime in, make CAP open source and rule the world and uh, have more developers outside SAP uh, use it. Yeah, and I jump in and basically say the same. Uh, I think we all love CAP because it's really great and it could be even greater if uh, it would be open source and we can really 
uh, move things forward with Cup. Hi, my name is Jaime Rodriguez. I'm one of the finalists in the Deptoberfest contest with my project ABAP Development Utilities. I'm in the world of open source in ABAP for a short time ago since I met ABAPGIT in the last TechEd in Barcelona. Since then, I try to know all capabilities of ABAPGIT and the community of ABAP around it, trying to contribute with something from my side, collaborating in projects like ABAPGIT, ABAP Open Checks, or Code for ABAP, and sharing some development like ABAP Development Utilities. About the project I'm here for, uh, ABAP Development Utilities, I try to be a series uh, a series of tools, like a toolbox, to help other developers with some simple, but in my experience, useful code uh, that you can use like libraries, or code snippets for your own development. The tools included in this project is a tool to read the fields from a structure, including the fields of included structures, to run ATC checks and get the result. There is a tool to run transport checks for a transport request, so you can get the results or save them to the database. The saved results, you can read them with the transport reader and you can retrieve them or display all the results. The next utility is a message collector. This is a very useful utility to me. Uh, you can collect uh, messages from a single message, message table, or from an exception. This allows you to, to retrieve all the collected messages, display them, or raise gateway exceptions, uh, business or technical. Uh, another utility is uh, a framework to send emails. It's a very simple utility. The next one is uh, a class serialization. So here you can serialize a class instance and save it into database. This is very useful to, to save logs and review them later. And the last one is a text process. This uh, allows you to, to read uh, standard text and transform uh, text from different formats, ATF, strings, or you can read also from the text pools. Those are all the utilities uh, included in my project. Uh, thank you so much. Hello everybody, my name is uh, Marcello Urbani. I'm an uh, app developer and uh, architect in uh, Basis Technologies in London and uh, I'm originally from Italy. I'm here to present my project which is a Visual Studio Code extension to edit uh, uh, ABAP files uh, uh, directly from your server. This extension allows you to do uh, all the basic uh, functionality in, uh, that you normally do with C80 or Eclipse, like creating and uh, editing uh, ABAP code, you know, pro programs, classes, and things like that. And has uh, syntax highlighting, uh, completion, uh, quick fixes, and so on. It allows you to, sh to see the difference between different uh, versions of uh, your SAP objects, both using the SAP ver internal versioning system and uh, ABAP Git, although ABAP Git currently is broken and has some basic support for CDS, but is not nearly as good as the ABAP support. Uh, it, uh, it allows you to do some uh, basic uh, transport uh, management as well, like uh, releasing your transport and checking uh, with which objects are inside and uh, looking at transport from other users and so on. And uh, it works more or less well depending on which version of the kind you are using. It has some uh, ABAP Git uh, integration which was broken after the a recent upda update to the backend code. Um, for the ABAP Git support, which lives in a different project, is shared with uh, the Eclipse plugin. A nice feature that I use very often is this transport-based version control. So from this view here, I can basically say, 
add the contents that, to this transport to the revision control view of Visual Studio Code. And here I end up with a list of the objects inside the transport. And clicking on uh, these objects, I can have a difference uh, between the version of the object before the transport and after the transport uh, on the right hand side of the code. And uh, it's uh, much more convenient to use for this purpose than the regular uh, Eclipse. Uh, it also has the ability of pretty printing the objects before comparing them, so it doesn't distract you with the uh, uppercase, lowercase difference or spacing and something like that. And the other uh, advanced feature I have is this uh, integration with the Test Explorer, which is uh, a completely independent extension for Visual Studio Code and has a very nice interface for running uh, ABAP unit and uh, has this uh, feature of uh, rerunning uh, your uh, tests on activation, which is really, really good if you're doing test drive-driven development. Hello all and happy time zone. My name is Lars. Uh, we'll talk a bit about ABAPKit that was part of the Devtoberfest event. ABAPKit is a Git client for ABAP objects written in ABAP. It is open source under the MIT license and works with version 702 and up. It's been an open source project for around the last five years. And here today, I also have Mark, which will uh, show us a bit and talk a bit about uh, our kit. Over to you, Mark. Hi, I'm Mark Bernard. After 22 years with SAP, I decided to start my own company. Mark Menard Tools is an open ecosystem SAP partner, developing essential tools for SAP customers and other partners. We are 100% ABAP shop, and without ABAP Git, we couldn't do our job. One of our goals is to support as many SAP customers as we can. So our tools should run on SAP releases all the way back to 702. ABAP Git allows us to work on all these releases in parallel, develop in 750, pull into 730, and test there. Fix the bugs in 7.30 and commit it back to the repository on GitHub, distributing it to the rest of our landscape. And at the end, ABAP Git generates a zip file that our customers and partners can deploy easily. Mark Bernard Tools uses ABAP Git every day and we can't recommend it enough. It's easy to install, keep up to date, and simply the best open source edition you can get for your ABAP system. Go to ababgit.org to get started with ababgit today. And best of all, it's free. And now a short demo. This is ababgit in 60 seconds. I am Mark Bernard. Installing ababgit is super easy. Go to github.com slash ababgit and download the latest version. Then go to your system, create a new program and upload the code. Activate the program and you're ready to run ababgit. On the first run, ABAP Git shows a tutorial page. Click New Online to create your first project. Let's have some fun with the ABAP Turtle project. Simply copy the URL into the ABAP Git form. Create a new dollar turtle package and select Clone Repository. ABAP Git shows a list of the repository objects. Click Pull to bring them all into your system. Confirm overriding the package and wait for the pull request to complete. Now we can create a new program to see if our ABAP Turtle project works. It's really that simple. Back in ABAP Git, you can see your Turtle project in the repository list. Open your project again and select Advanced Uninstall. In no time, you're back to a clean system. Thanks for watching ABAP Git in 60 seconds. I am Mark Bernard. And just like the Turtle project, there is a lot of other open source projects in the ABAP world. You can all go to .abap.org to find all of these amazing projects done by the community. And talking about community for um, contributions to ABAP Git, there's been all of these contributions by all of these amazing people and I would like to thank them for their contributions to the ABAP Git ecosystem. Thank you very much. Also, congratulations from our side to all fi finalists of the Devtoberfest. And um, I would like to ask Max, since he's 
he was more involved in that process of the nine weeks on what were your personal highlights? Well, I had the easy part uh, to, to just uh, to be uh, judging oh, yeah. uh, the judging finalists. Is... And um, to be honest, I'm quite impressed to um, have a look at what they came up with uh, in their, so to say, spare time. Because, well, we all have our jobs to do and they come up, so to say, in their spare time with, with excellent ideas. Um, Volker and Gregor and Mike with, with the cup adapters, for example, and uh, it's amazing what they have achieved just in a couple of days. And I'd like to highlight also not only uh, the cup adapters, I have, I've forgotten Lars and the others with, mm -hmm. with uh, the ABAP focused um, additions. Uh, I'd just like to well, highlight it, it's highlighting those folks because they are absolute role models when it comes to community engagement. It's mm -hmm. amazing how they connect with each other in this. Uh, Strange times, I'd like to say. Um, and well, <laughs> it wasn't only just coding. Um, I was impressed by how sophisticated the solutions were when it comes to documentation, to testing, to instructions, how to get started, samples, and it's just it's just amazing and uh, mind-boggling. They really thought it through, and that's what you appreciated at the end. Absolutely. The judging and. Absolutely. And then there was also uh, the voting process at the end in the SAP community, right? So in the Q&A system where the community members were able to vote on the finalists at the end. Absolutely. So I think an applause definitely goes to not only the finalists, but also to everyone that contributed and helped um, help voting. Yeah, in the end, the SAP community are all winners yeah. because they benefit of what has been built during uh, the tour. Really cool. And with this, uh, we would like to actually travel to somewhere totally different. India. Not, yeah, <laughs> India, <laughs> not Bavaria or anything. Uh, we're done with the Toberfest, but we're going to India and having a remote check-in with Svea Becker and Ari and his team. <laughs> and welcome back to SAP TechEd 2020 online. So I'm here on my really pretty rooftop and um, also I would like to thank Minina and Max for handing over and congratulations to the winners of Deptoberfest. Yeah, as Minina mentioned, uh, we are going to uh, travel a little bit around the world again. I'm going to take you on a journey and we would like to visit India. So it's still the idea of connecting with different people from all around the world in these remote check-ins to see how SAP TechEd is going over there. And um, yeah, I'm really happy that I can travel to India today. And I also have really special guests because um, the next guest you may have already seen in, when you have visited SAP TechEd in India. So um, it's a team of three people. They have been highly involved in the preparation of um, SAP TechEd. And um, yeah, so uh, Mohamed Raoul called Arif. Um, he is the uh, SAP TechEd lead for Andy India. And with him um, are 
Hiba, um, Hiba Alam, I'm sorry, Hiba Alam and Asam Faruqi, they are marketing and communication consultants and here they are. Hello and uh, yeah, good morning from my side here, it's very early morning. How are you? Very good morning, uh, Svea. Uh, it's, and it's, it's morning for us as well. Uh, so good to see you. We're hail and hearty. Thank you. Can you see my pretty nice rooftop here and the nice background? How do you like it? It seems that, it, it seems that you are in India right now. I mean, I, 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 it, 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 it looks like that you are in India, just, just beside us somewhere. That's right. I'm really close to you. That's true. So where are you joining us from? Arif. So I am joining from uh, Bangalore. Uh, currently, uh, the, the way we have the head office for SAP Labs India. Okay. And the largest, uh, the largest number of partners and customers in India are in Bangalore. That's right. And you are not alone. I have introduced you already. So hello, Hiba. Hello, Asan. How are you? Yeah, good. Thank you, Swell. I am joining from Pink City, Jaipur, which is in Rajasthan. Namaste from my side. Welcome to the show and Asan. Thanks, Ria. Um, I'm doing good. Hope the same for you. Uh, I'm joining from uh, the capital city, New Delhi. Wonderful. Thanks very much for, for tuning in. So, Arif, I just told the audience your name is uh, Mohammad Rao, but you are called Arif. So, can you tell us more about that? How is that <laughs> going? <laughs> so, so, the thing is, uh, I, I go by the name of Arif, and Rao, seem, uh, Rao is my family name, or the surname, as we call it here in India. But uh, Muhammad also gets included in our names uh, because of the religion part. And when I, when I was getting a user ID in SAP, they just picked up Mohammad Rao because they said, you've got lots of names. We'll just pick any two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I've been carrying it since then. But this is also an advantage, right? Because then you're not receiving so many emails. So, I mean, it took, took already mm -hmm. a long time for me to figure out your email address because Arif, I, I couldn't find any Arif. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I mean, uh, you know, when, when you are closer to a project and when you have uh, lots of emails coming, it is a boon because, uh, you know, you get lesser number of emails and people tend to send the email to somebody else. But that's also a negative because you might uh, miss uh, some important emails. That's right. Once my yeah. manager actually missed my uh, name and he sent it to somebody in Singapore. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, this, uh, this can also be complicated, that's right. So Arif, we yeah. both met last year at TechEd Bangalore. Remember that? Yeah, I, I, I would surely remember that. And it was, uh, it was before the TechEd era. It's been a, a challenging year for all of us uh, in 2020. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, I hope to see you again soon. I hope so too, yeah, I hope so too. So let us talk about a little bit um, uh, about the SAP TechEd preparation. I have said that um, you are the TechEd program lead for India. Can you tell us something more about that? What was your role with um, TechEd preparation? So uh, uh, when it is a physical event, I am the conference manager for TechEd Bangalore. But uh, this year, since uh, it became virtual, me and my team were uh, working on uh, the experience management for TechEd. And, uh, we were trying to uh, ensure that we create some interesting experiences for the audience uh, uh, for TechEd globally. Oh, all right. And yeah. uh, to, to talk more about it, I would pass it on to my team. Uh, to start with, Essen, uh, would you like to tell us something? Thanks, Arif. Uh, yes, so uh, this year I'm also part of the experience work stream responsible to provide my support and expertise for the audience to break the monotony of the day-long sessions. Uh, so we instilled few experiential elements in the platforms and in the other uh, uh, community talks and strategy talks that we are doing. Uh, one of the elements is mural art, which I would put forward to Heva to please explain a bit about that, please. Sure, so this year I'm also part of the Experiences work stream, and we had mural art which will capture the key summary of some of the uh, important sessions in a fun and interactive way. And you can find it on the developer lab in channel one, as well as on social media. Yeah, this is right. I saw it and um, they are really, really great. They are 
beautiful, pretty, and I, I like these mural, um, murals very much. And I also wanted to say, that's right, we have it in our developer lab here in Channel One. So uh, everyone have a look into our wall. There are some um, murals over there. So thanks very much. I like them very much. So uh, I assuming India is so huge and you have a big community out there, right? You, you mentioned there are a lot of attendees uh, coming from India as well. So um, how are you connected somehow? So, uh, yeah, it's the, the, the TechEd community is huge in India. I mean, uh, since the time I took over as the TechEd uh, lead uh, in India, it, in 2012, uh, I've been associated. I remember uh, we had close to 3,500 attendees and it has been growing since then. 2019, uh, when it was a physical event, we had more than 7,000 attendees. And this year, uh, also in the virtual TechEd, we are, uh, I mean, we have close to more than 10,000 people uh, attending virtually from India. Wow. So yes, uh, we, we are connected with them as well. Yes. Great. Uh, also, uh, you know, the, the community here is, uh, you know, they are very keen to learn and to find out more and more what's going on in the SAP space. So, and the partner community as well uh, uh, is quite big here. And I would pass it on to my colleague, Essen, to talk about the partner uh, community here. Thanks, Arif. Yes, you rightly said. Uh, SAP, uh, the partner community here in uh, India is quite big. Uh, from hyperscalers to non-hyperscalers, all of them shown a uh, keen interest and zeal to attend the TechEd uh, this year. Uh, let it be physical or virtual. So just to name a few partners like uh, Red Hat, HCL, IBM, they reached to me like even when the register uh, registrations did not started. Uh, so yes, they all are looking forward to uh, navigate this new normal by imparting education to their folks and upskill them. And yes, uh, this year the the participation is 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 really fantastic from the partners this year. Uh, Hiba, uh, can you please tell us more about? Yeah, sure. Uh, since I was handling marketing and communications for Tech in Bangalore in 2018 and 19. My email box was full of queries from SAP customers and partners here from India. And um, I believe that we are going to hit record number of uh, attendees this year. And I'm really happy and excited to see that huge uh, number of registrations have come from India. And uh, I'm following the hashtag SAP Tech It, And it's really good to see that uh, the community is buzzing. People really like the keynote by Jorgen Mueller. And uh, yeah, they're excited about the upcoming sessions. Yeah, thank you. So um, I also recommend to follow the hashtag SAP TechEd and SAP Community. There's a lot of going on over there. And you can see also there are a lot of um, tweets from and posts from India. Um, so Hiba, um, thank you very much for sharing this with us. So how do you like this whole setup so far? So how have you been and and um, where, which kind of ticket did you join before? Have you been in Bangalore or in anywhere else? Yeah, so uh, the virtual event is going really well so far. We all are sitting at home, but we are learning together. We are connected and it makes it all the more interesting. And this year we have, we have opened it up to more attendees. So there are no barriers in terms of travel and budget. So we see lots of participation this year compared to the physical events. And um, Apart from TechEd Bangalore, I have been to TechEd Barcelona and uh, I must say that attendees from any of the TechEd are equally excited and passionate about learning SAP technologies, which help them to build their careers and help their organizations grow. Wow, this is great. Yeah, this is really great. Asan, have you been to any other TechEd? Well, uh, I have been to TechEd India only. Uh, never got a chance to travel to uh, Barcelona and Las Vegas. Uh, but yes, uh, TechEd is, uh, irrespective of its medium of delivery, uh, it's always a treat for the people to um, join and learn from the uh, people from the IT industry, especially. Uh, virtual event compared to physical events have its own pros and cons. I would like to sum it up in a way, it's, it's more like playing a FIFA on a gaming console. Uh, where you uh, you enjoy and have fun on both the ways, but the look and feel varies a bit. 
That's true. Yeah, that's true. And um, I also I always think about uh, when I joined a um, physical football event. So is it really better? Because when you sit in front of the TV, you even can see every play, every player better and the goals are repeated and so on. So I, I, I don't know if this is uh, maybe the better way uh, to be virtual joining any event. So. That's right. I, I like this comparison. So, um, Arif, let us hear from you. Have you been into other tickets or are you traveling usually to others as well or only India? So I, I, I usually travel to other uh, locations as well, to Vegas, Barcelona in the past and also to Sapphires, etc. Uh, what, what I think is that virtual event has, uh, has the power to bring the whole world together on one single platform. In TechEd Bangalore or in Barcelona or in Vegas, we could not network with so many people together at one place because you know, it's, it, it has its limitations. But the virtual platform brings uh, you know, so many opportunities for people to network and come together on one single platform, you know, being from different uh, parts of the world. And, uh, but but, but I, I must say that uh, a physical event can never matter a virtual event because I mean we're after all human beings and we need that human touch I mean I, I still remember meeting you in person and sharing a few laughs and you know uh, you know shaking hands with my colleagues etc so all that is going to be uh, uh, back soon and I know uh, this will change uh, for future after the COVID maybe we have uh, just virtual events or we have a, a hybrid event where we have some elements of a virtual event along with the physical events, which might be an improved version. Yeah, that's right. And that's really a good idea. I think so too, that it will go in this direction. Yeah. Okay. Coming back to um, the content, uh, Asan, let us know what kind of sessions did you watch? All right. Uh, so I being a part of the uh, uh, for the partner sponsorships uh, for the last two years for Tech Aid India, so I watched all the sessions on demand there in the partner showcase part. Apart from that, one particular session I I, I watched and thoroughly enjoyed was the uh, uh, case for SAP HANA Cloud at NHL, uh, delivered by Greg Notch. Uh, he's the senior vice president and uh, for IT and security there. Uh, a, a, a very informative session as to how uh, SAP HANA Cloud is actually helping them out in, in crunching data, lots and lots of data, and helping the uh, uh, leagues and the coaches uh, to uh, uh, to analyze the, these data for for their own benefit in the real time. So that was that was really really good to watch. Interesting. Thanks for sharing, Hiba. What did you watch? Uh, there was this one session titled Simplified Account and Rewards Management, and I find it very informative where Toyota in Australia talked uh, how they how they uh, streamlined and simplified the processes, uh, which will help their business users and uh, record the transactions. And they leveraged on few SAP technologies, and that integrates multiple data and exposes the necessary information through the SAP Fury apps. So that uh, session, particular session, was I found it really helpful. Great, thank you, Arif. I'm pretty sure you also yeah. sure watch something, right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I've been I've been on uh, on the platform for so long, and uh, you know, apart from the keynotes uh, that I watched, I mean, I am an, also an ardent uh, automobile fan, and not just because uh, you know I'm fascinated about the cars or the finished products, but also the kind of innovation the company goes uh, and uh, company adopts in order to stay ahead. I mean, so so I checked this session on Porsche's uh, innovation data management and analytics strategy, which was delivered by uh, uh, Marcus Hartman, who's the mm -hmm. IT manager at uh, Porsche AG. And this was also very close to my heart because I remember in 2007, I went for an exchange program to Germany and I vis visited the Porsche factory. So that's why, I mean, uh, it was very interesting to see uh, the solutions uh, provided by SAP, uh, you know, on the innovative data management and analytics experience. So it was fun watching the session. Perfect. Great. This sounds really, really great. And um, is there anything on your agenda for today? Yeah, obviously, yes. I mean, I would be, I, I would be watching the partner talk uh, about Apple's success with iOS. 
And then I'm looking forward to this session and I can tell all the viewers as well that do not miss this session by the YouTuber uh, Simona Gertz. She has 2.33 million views. I mean, sorry, subscribers on YouTube and have a great fan following. I mean, something I don't want to miss and I would suggest nobody should miss this. This is a very good hint. So tune in to our session with Simone Giers. I think it's really, really great um, what she is um, preparing and installing and it's really nice. Um, okay, then let us shortly and briefly go into your plans, Hiba, and afterwards, Asan. Yeah, so even I'm excited and looking forward to the roadmap session, which will talk about what's new in SAP Cloud Platform, about the latest innovation, and we can get insights into uh, what updates in SAP Cloud Platform integration suit and extension suit. So I'm looking forward for that particular session. Thank you. All right. Uh, well, yes, I'm also looking forward. It's a, it's a very hot topic these days, uh, Climate 21. So uh, I'm looking forward to this session uh, called the Roadmap for Climate Action Powered by SAP Swohana. Uh, the session idea I would like to quote uh, DT812. Uh, those who are interested, please uh, catch up with this session. Uh, it's all about uh, sustainability related en enhancement for Climate 21. Uh, if you want to know more about that, just Google it. Uh, you'll find lo loads of information on that. Yeah. So this particular session I'm really looking forward to. Yeah, I think it's a really important topic. That's that's right. All right. So um, I thanks very much for sharing your plans and so on. Do you have any other highlight you want to share with us? I think uh, I, I I would let this pass uh, on to my team again. I mean, Hiba and Essen. Uh, Hiba, would you like to share uh, uh, something about uh, what people shouldn't miss uh, here or the highlights? Yeah, sure, Arif. So I think people shouldn't miss SAP TechEd wrap up and uh, the live Q and A session with the board members, and where the board members will team up to reflect on the highlights of the events and uh, the most asked questions by our community. And last not the least, we are 2.8 million strong SAP community, and I would suggest you to all follow SAP community to stay updated on latest in tech at SAP. Yeah, just to add uh, on top of it. Uh... Uh, just be a part of the SAP community, join the fun, join, uh, join us uh, wherever you are from. We are a strong family and growing and growing every day. Great. That was it, Swear. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thanks very much for joining. Thanks very much for pointing out to SAP community. It was a pleasure having you here on my rooftop. Thank you. So Thank you. the SAP So it was really great chatting with um, my colleagues from India. And um, it was an important point that Hiba said, SAP community is there to connect each other. So also throughout SAP TechEd, you are able to find answers for your question, to share your knowledge, which you have gained with SAP TechEd. So it's really a great opportunity. And um, follow me on SAP community, follow my colleagues from India in SAP community.
Yes, thank you, Svea and uh, Arif, Hiba and Ashan. It was really nice hearing from you um, how SAP Tacket is going so far and how you are looking forward to the upcoming tracks. Um, also hearing from Arif that there is more than 10,000, really 10,000 um, attendees here coming from India. Very warm well welcome. And I would really like to hear actually your experience with SAP Tacket so far. Um, where, are you, where are you located? Where are you sitting, watching um, the live stream at Channel One or the content track strategy talks and so on? Um, use the hashtag SAP Tacket and SAP Community and share with social media. It would be great to hear where all you are based. And, and I'm entirely sure that they're super excited about what's on uh, your agenda, what's your favorite so mine. far? Because we do have the content tracks coming up in the next hour. We have, as you probably know, eight content tracks, and I do my best to uh, list all of them. I can help we you. have <laughs> analytics, application development and integration, database and data management, intelligent technologies, intelligent integrated suite, custom experience, digital transformation with intelligent ERP, and the partner community. And right. as I said, I want to hear some of your favorites of the strategy talks they are kicking off the content tracks. Yeah, uh, the favorites that are coming up, and I'd like to highlight some of those, uh, are so in the integrated inter intelligence suite, there is uh, create a future proof user experience for your intelligent enterprise coming up. Um, in the analytics track, the strate strategy talk decisions without doubt, create your own data warehousing journey and uh, future-proof your extensibility strategy across SAP solutions in 2021. And more to come, so uh, check out the agenda on saptechhead.com and what's coming up next for you. Um, but of course, it depends on what time you've got, right? So um, we have some tips and tricks around that. So if you would like to um, get some recaps, uh, look, look out for what's coming up next, then you're definitely at the right place with us. Um, but if you have spare more time, like more than 30 minutes, um, we definitely recommend the strategy talks, um, um, deep dives, hands-on le lectures, so definitely a lot to cover for you. Now, I would like to give an outlook to the next coming uh, video, <laughs> which is coming up. So uh, I don't want to say too much, but saying that we, are, we will have a very inspiring person um, coming up um, right soon. But before that, uh, let's check it out who this is. Throughout the history, humans had an unquenchable thirst for exploring the unknown. We saw a society that invented the wheel to tread ground quickly who mastered the skies and waves. Those numerous ideas and inventions have built the path to a technic-driven world. At the beginning of the digital age, all this was bundled in the groundbreaking developments and experiments of our queen. What the hell are you doing here? Mrs. Simone Geertz. This was the beginning of the artificial intelligence age. Today we look and behave exactly like humans. Thank you Queen Simone Geertz for building a better future. Huh? Yes, you should be definitely spend some time uh, watching this interview coming up with Simone Geertz. Um, it will be inspiring and some fun moments coming up with her. Um, we would like to give you some outlook of what's coming up next in the couple of hours. So you will hear from um, or gain insights about SAP in Industry Cloud. Then we will hear about the CX strategy and look forward for our inspiring person with more than 2.3 million um, followers on YouTube, Simone Geertz. So stay tuned with that. But we 
also want to highlight that, I mean, since there are so many topics coming up, you definitely shouldn't miss out um, the most important information and announcements. Where can people find it, Max? <laughs> <laughs> There's one URL I do always remember, and that's sap.com tagit dash news with all the latest announcements made during tagit. From whatever it um, ranges from the SAP Business Technology Platform to Data Intelligence, uh, Data Warehouse Cloud, whatever it is, have a look. There's over 45 pages or 49 pages. I can't remember. There's so much to know. But um, what should people do in order to check out uh, what session might be uh, like, uh, sufficient for them? In order. Sufficient, you mean like. Time wise? Time wise. We do have different sessions, right? Time wise and, and interesting wise. <laughs> How do you say that? Um, of course, uh, check with us. We said that. And check out the section on saptacket.com. What time you got? We do have different session types and choose the one which is the best for you. Um, but. I'm super curious because uh, we do have a recap video of what happened until now. It ranges from Jürgen Müller's keynote to several Q&As. Uh, we have been part of that couple of uh, hours already. And I'm looking forward to see our recaps of the last hours. With that, I hope you enjoy the video and we'll see you in a bit. We're already over 30 hours into SAP Tech at 2020. I mean, that's just amazing. Einstein showed us that time is an illusion. We have three SAP champions talking about their experience in the tech industry. If I thought about a programmer, I was thinking about a guy with a short sleeve white shirt with a black tie and a pocket protector working for NASA. It's basically difficult before it becomes simple. I want to go home because I want to start coding. <laughs> <laughs> These next two hours are going to be jam packed with digital transformation. We want to talk about best practices for moving to SAP S4 HANA in a cloud environment. These are the two rock stars in the community and they will talk about the tools to support a move to S4 HANA. Toyota Australia is going to be talking about what they used SAP Cloud Platform for. Really appreciate your time, thank you very much. Not giving away much more there. <laughs> no more spoilers, Tom. No, 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 no. no. Speaking of spoilers, what do we have coming up next? Today, we're going to talk about Splunk's new product, Service Intelligence for SAP Solutions. What tools do you have? What runtimes do you have? What are these things called APIs? Do we have specific programming models? We know CAP, we know RAP, we know that for runtimes we have Kima, we have Cloud Foundry, we have the ABAP environment. You can integrate that with Qualtrics, you can use chatbots. You can like almost wrap this whole thing, like there's the CAP, there's the RAP. And now I think we have another behind the scenes video. So very interested to see that. The way this is done can be described as virtual production that has become popular since the Mandalorian. Did he say Mandalorian? <laughs> 